Not having a fridge is no excuse for not doing temperature control fermentation. Brewing doesn't have to be expensive if you're just a little bit smart. And as I like to say to my students, don't be stupid. Life gets much easier that way. I'm Dr. Hans. This is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. Speaking of beer, this is not beer. This is Julmust Christmas Soda. Nice. So, temperature control without fermentation. No, temperature control without a fridge. Why is it important with temperature control? I still think it's important with temperature control if you are fermenting under pressure. I still have had beers that have, would have been better if I had had doing them temperature control when I had not to, but I think you get away with more if you ferment under pressure, but all of you aren't fermenting under pressure. Why aren't you fermenting under pressure? But you can still make excellent beer just in a bucket and you can still temperature control without a fridge or any cooling. Nice. The base idea is to pick a yeast that can handle heat. So that means this method, and I have talked about this in an earlier video, this method could work for even hotter climates. You know, I live in Sweden, but this will work in hotter climates also. Just pick your right yeast and you need a little bit gear, but it doesn't have to get expensive and it doesn't have to take a lot of space in your brew shed or wherever you are fermenting. Pro tip, don't place your fermenter near a heating element or something because they kick on and off and can really screw up things. So basically your environment is your source of cooling down the fermentation. And you should have at least, and I will try to uh, convert everything also in Fahrenheit, use Celsius here, but you should at least have three degrees Celsius difference in the room to the fermentation temperature, intended fermentation temperature. But I would highly suggest that you have a little more to play with than that. It's good to insulate your vessel and you could use like these boards, you know, the one you place under your wife's knees or, you know, blankets aren't good just to cover up shit with. You can use that also. And if you want to get fancy, depend on your vessel, of course, you could get some sort of jacket. These are great and uh, this can even fit a small child if needed. This is for the uh, Fermenter King 35, the snub nose and the Fermenter King, yes. 35 liters, but you can do the other ones in those also, yes, yes, smaller. Anything that insulates, and don't just wrap things around your fermenter. You could also place something underneath your fermenter and throw a couple of blankets or something on top of it, and you built yourself a little fermentation TP, fermentation tent. And you will need a heat source, of course. I like to use this heating mat, but you could use heating belts or whatever give you the, uh, the power. <laughs> You can either wrap this around your vessel, just strapping it on there. I also have tried with a bucket and just place a bit of foam underneath and actually placing the bucket on the heating mat. And I thought this might kick off some nasty shit from the yeast there, but I never had an issue really. And uh, people will say that this will do that. Try it, don't take my word for it, but I haven't had an issue with, with that. But you can easily place it on top of the, the true line, just wrap it to the side of the fermenter. And of course, you should also insulate the fermenter and, and the top. Yeast wise, you need a yeast that can handle more heat than your room, at least three degrees Celsius, but that means that you need to have a really stable temperature. And if your temperature in the room actually are fluctuating during the hours of the day, I might suggest that you have a little bit more to play with than just 3 degrees Celsius, so maybe at least 5 or even more. Insulation and the heating source, which we need to control, of course. For controlling the heat, you could use an ink bird, which you don't see out of camera, or an FTC 1000, which you more or less don't see either 
I know my channel sucks, but maybe you shouldn't subscribe here, but you could drop a like, because every like saves a unicorn. Nice. Cheers. I will make a list down below in the description or link to a list where I come with suggestions with some G-strings that can handle a lot of heat, different temperature ranges, but if you haven't been sleeping under rock, you should also have heard of Quike. There's a lot of Quike varieties that can handle a lot of heat. So in the warmest climate, this should be possible. Maybe not in the warmest, I don't know. But people have been brewing beer in hot places for thousands and thousands of years before they got themselves a fridge. Why are these important? Well, sometimes fermentation rushes and it gets really fast and it pushes up the temperature. That fermentation push up the temperature is normal because during the fermentation, heat is one of the byproducts of alcohol, CO2, esters, and more, and heat. Heat upon heat upon heat. But sometimes fermentation really rushes and really pushes up that temperature. It's not all about temperature. Sometimes higher temperature can mean cleaner beer, but when fermentation goes out of control, which can happen also during pressure. So even though you get on away with a lot more, don't forget about temperature control. You can get really nasty like off flavors. I like to call them stress yeast. Holding back your yeast taking control of the temperature. You don't have to be anal about like 0.1 degrees Celsius, but like a stable temperature during fermentation. I also like to push up my temperature in the end, maybe just a few degrees, doing like a diaster rest and really help the yeast ferment out. Also, at that time, I like to dry hop when there's still some fermentation going on and I push up the temperature a little to deal with stuff like diacetyl, hop creep and stuff like that. If you want to learn a little bit more about diacetyl, this is diacetyl for dummies. If you want to get into pressurized fermentation, this is a playlist about pressurized fermentation. Or you can see what happens if you try to push any of these two. We just tap it or tap that one. Cheers. See you in the next one, Dr. Hansel.